here, and uh, Alan's going to talk to us uh, about a, uh, a rather unique telescope from a little bit on the lighter side. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Alan. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's uh, first of all take a look around the room. Okay. You guys are the best of the best. <laughs> you made it to the last of the Friday night. Almost a final. Oh, I'm sorry. Another day. There's one more. I was told it was last, so it must have been. Uh, it, it, it wasn't one. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Adam Hall, and I've been a telescope maker for an amateur astronomer for 40 years. And the reason I'm here tonight is because of a good friend of mine, Ed Turco. A lot of you people might know him. Some of you probably don't. Listen to Rhode Island. And he's been a telescope maker even longer than I have. In fact, when I was 15 years old, I, uh, 14 years old, I joined skyscrapers in Sacred Rhode Island, went to see the Allen Park Telescope there with my father, saw the moon and Jupiter, I got hooked right away. So, what's one of the first things a young person can do when they're impressed by astronomy? How many geeks out here that are remaining? Remember, the first thing you do is go buy Sky and Telescope, right? The Sky and Telescope magazine. So, uh, how many of you guys remember looking at the back page at the uh, Unitron 3 inch photo vector right? We all done it. And how about the engine catalog? Remember the uh, 6 inch reflectors, the 8 inch reflectors, and we're all drooling over those telescopes. Cost. I never, we never have a chance to get them. Can we get the lights put up to? I really don't need them. And the lights are probably going to help to, to show you this. Thanks. Anyway, so I'm uh, a C grade telescope, uh, looking about a year later. I'm 15 years old. And I hear this noise down in the basement. So I want to see what it is. I walk down into the basement, and there's this young gentleman, he's probably 22, 23 years old, got a pipe in his mouth, smoke curling up behind his ear, sitting in a chair. In front of a rotating spindle. He's pushing some glass. And I didn't know what the heck he was doing. I introduced him. Well, I looked at my name's Ed Turco. Well, what are you doing? I'm making a telescope mirror. I'm going to take out the cellophane in a few months. They had a little contest up there. And I looked at it and I was amazed. You're making a telescope? A thought like this had never occurred to me at 14 or 15 years old. And I saw the sludge go over his hands, and he, let, he pushed the glass, and I thought, wow, this is really cool. Now, Ed has been doing this, and he was my inspiration. I've been building telescopes for 40 years. And Ed has come to Stellafane many, many times. He brought that mirror to Stellafane, and he won an award with it. I remember going to his house when I was about 16 or 17 years old, and I looked up on a wall, and, you, and I just remembered the gleam in his eye when he showed me that award hanging on the wall. You know, it, it just touched me that he was so proud of that. And he's won several awards here now at uh, Stella And in fact, at one point, he was a judge in the optical competition. Well, let's get nine years. And uh, he can't move around as much as he used to anymore. So he'd like to say to all, to all his friends up here that remembers him. And he can't make the trip anymore, but he still participates in astronomy. And a lot of you might know about Bobby Red from Cloudy Nights, because that's how he participates in, in the uh, hobby these days. He'll scan Cloudy Nights. And Ed was always an innovator. He was always one of the first to do things. And when I saw one of his posts, I almost fell off the chair. My, I was laughing so hard, I could not even contain myself. So I, I talked to him to let me share this with you tonight. So apparently there's been some threads floating around. And Ed, like I said, always wanted to be an innovator, always wanted to be ahead of the curve. And there's a trend lately for all of us amateur telescope makers out here to build bigger mirrors, Faster mirrors, thinner mirrors. 
Big fast spin, that's where we're going. Ed thought he jumped ahead of the curve, and he wanted me to bring this up with me tonight, so he could show it to everybody. And some of you have seen this already. This is the one, the only, the first in the world. Get it out of here. Chromoscope. Oops. Sorry. Chromoscope. It's a four-inch F1. Why waste your time making F2 or F3s, right? Let me show you the inside. It's kind of, uh, looks like about 85% central instruction in there. Okay? And Ed, ever being the efficient user of materials, decided he didn't want to put the extra bill for the enhanced coatings. So he went with the satin finish aluminum paint coating instead of the high gloss finish aluminum paint coating. This baby has a whopping 0.083 strel ratio. And it says it is guaranteed to keep coma correcting lens designers busy for the next 20 years. And the one request we'd like to make of everybody here tonight is he doesn't know how to mount it yet. He needs some help with that. So if you could pop in on cloudy nights and give him a few suggestions on how we should mount this coma scope, I'm sure he'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much.